guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on Thursday, which means it's time for a magic stuff. And today I'm going to be doing another one of the three best trick series. Today I'm going to be looking at three tricks. Uh, three opening coin routines that you've probably never seen before. So three opening coin routines that you've never seen before. Coin magic is a little bit like card magic. You want to grab people's attention right from the very beginning. How do you grab people's attention? Well, one of the ways to grab people's attention is by uh, performing something really quick, really visual, that really grabs the audience's attention. And there's lots of different routines that you can use to do this. In fact, this is probably going to be one of a series of videos um, because I think that there's a lot we can actually look at here. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be three tricks that you can use to open your coin set that you've never seen before or very unlikely to have seen before. So with that in mind, we're going to go straight into the first trick using coins that opens a coin routine that you've never seen before. So the first trick that I want to talk to you about is uh, from the DVD set, Three Pieces of Silver by Rune Klan. Now, if you don't know Rune Klan, Rune Klan is one of my favorite magicians of all time. I've told this story on the channel before, but I remember when I met Rune at the IBM Sam convention, and I was kind of obsessed with him. He is my favorite magician, and I was obsessed with him. I, was, um, I had learned everything off his Three Pieces of Silver videotape. So Rune bought out a Three Pieces of Silver videotape, which was all routines with three regular coins, three half dollars no gimmicks and it was so old it was a videotape and I I got this and I learned everything really knuckle busting stuff and I learned everything when I first met Rune I was like oh my gosh it's really nice to meet you I'm a huge fan I, I do everything you do and he's like everything and I was like everything and I proceeded to show him every single routine of his of his videotape now if you want to get three pieces of silver it was unavailable for a very long time it is now available again from Vanishing Ink as a DVD I think it might be as a download as well uh, and also Rune's book is amazing as well so you want to check that out, Rune's World. But this is one of the routines off that DVD, and it is very quick. Rune actually uses it to go into a longer routine, but I use it an awful lot as just a coin production. And what it is, is it's a way of actually making three coins appear, three regular half dollars. And, and what's nice about this is the sequences that you're using. So you're using, your hands are being seen empty all the way through as you're pantomiming, grabbing three coins. And then immediately the three coins appear. It's really strong and the angles are really good. Let me show that for you. I'm going to perform this for you first of all, and then we'll talk about why it's so good. Now, uh, I'm going to show you something with uh, two hands and an invisible coin. The invisible coin is right there. You probably can't see that invisible coin because there's nothing to see. It's invisible. Uh, but it is there. That's coin number one. There's a second coin right there. That's coin number two. Let me just put that one with the, uh, with the first one. You probably can't see them there. But there are actually two invisible coins. The third invisible coin... Uh, is right there. Let me put that one there. I've now got a fan of three. You can't see them until I rub, and when I rub, they become visible, and that's one, two, three American half dollars. Uh, okay, so that is the three pieces of silver uh, coin production. It's not an easy routine to do. You're having to use curl palm. You're having to do transfers. You're having to use Demonchi grip. You're having to silently maneuver three coins around from hand to hand to hand to hand during the course of the sequence. But because what the, the beautiful thing behind this is the routining. So Rune has created a sequence where your hands are being sewn empty in a very natural way. A lot of the time when you're moving coins from one hand to another, you've got some very unnatural grips that you're having to do. But not with this. It's kind of like, right, I'm going to put the coin here. It looks really natural natural it really does and your hands appear empty the nice thing is as well you just have the three coins in your pocket and you're good to go so when you want to go into this routine you just put three coins into your pocket it starts off in curl palm and you are good to go and you go straight into the routine um the angles are really good. A lot of the time with this style of routine, the angles are terrible because you're having to use back clips or C palms or JW grip or something like that. That's not the case with this routine. With this routine, the angles are really good, even though your hands are being shown empty throughout, which is also really nice. And the nice thing is because you're just using three regular coins, you can then go into whatever it is that you want to do that uses regular coins. I have actually played around with this in the past of actually having a shell on one of the coins and doing the exact same sequence, but keeping the shell in place. And that works just as well. So you can actually use this um, to have three coins and then hand the coins out for examination, palming the shell off, take the coins back, load the shell on top, and you're good to go into a, a coin to cross or whatever it is that you want to use your shell for. Um, it's also one of those routines that, that it doesn't matter whether people are standing up or sitting down. Uh, because the angles are so good, 
it works in either environments. So you can you can be doing banquet table and you can be doing it here and people can see the coin production and it looks great. People can be looking for the side and they won't see anything. But if you're doing mix and mingle, it looks equally as good. The one negative I'd say, if I want to have a negative about it, is you can't use dollar-sized coins. I've tried. I've got big hands and I've tried to do with, with dollar-sized coins and it's not really worked as well as I hoped it would. So um, I had to adapt it a little bit. But So dollar-sized coins don't really work too well with it. Half dollars work out absolutely brilliantly but in terms of a very quick production sequence it looks great it really does and it does what a coin routine should do at the beginning which is establish credibility you know you you just make one coin appear well, it's kind of like okay that's not so bad but then you start making loads of coins appear it's like okay wow okay this guy this guy knows what he's doing and rather than you see most coin productions you produce one coin like that, you just produce one coin, right? With this, you're producing three coins. Immediately, pew, a fan of three. So yeah, it's a really, really cool production. It's by Rune Klein. You can learn it from the Three Pieces of Silver DVD set. Uh, that's the first trick using coins that you've never seen before. Let's look at the second production. Okay, so the second trick that you've probably never seen before, it's, it's, it's an opening routine, and I use it as an opener. But it, but to be honest, it's like a two or a three minute routine. In this two or three minutes, you've got coins appearing. You've got them jumping from one place to another. You've got them disappearing. You've got like an entire act here in two or three minutes. Uh, now, this is my variation of the routine. I am talking about Jeff Latter's uh, three coin trick here. So I'm talking about Jeff Latter's three coin trick, which you can learn from the New York Coin Guys volume one. They bought out 16 DVDs, I think it was, volume one this is on. And this is the first, uh, this is, the, the, this is uh, an amazing production. Now I've changed it, I've changed the handling uh, for the first phase and for the final phase and slightly tweaked the middle phase. But it is, in essence, Jeff Latter's routine. Um, now what's really nice about this is, like I say, it's just so super visual and there's so much magic happening in a very short period of time. So I'm going to perform this for you first of all. So let me perform it for you and then we'll go into why it's so good. I want you to watch very carefully. Do not blink. I'm going to show you something with a piece of nothing. Now you can't see that nothing because it's invisible, but if I shake, I can take the invisibility off it. That's actually a pure silver Morgan dollar. It's a beautiful coin. Now, I'm going to do that again for you. See, I can actually take another one. You can't see it until I do this, and that gives us two. So now we've got one there. We've got one there. That's two coins. Uh, the last one appears right here at the tips of my fingers. That's one, two. Oh, hang on a second. I had three a second ago. That's really weird. Hang on, sorry. Two here, one here. That's where it is. So we've got one. Hang on a second. I have this is so weird. I tell you, I'll make the coin appear at the tips of the fingers. Watch right there at the tips Oh, sorry, the tips of these fingers. There you go, the tips of these fingers. So now we've got the three coins, now I can do the trick. Now watch very carefully, watch the three coins, don't blink. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. One at a time, the coin's gonna go up the sleeve, across the chest, down the other sleeve, and when I squeeze, the first coin actually jumps across like that. Now people think it really does go up the sleeve, it doesn't, all I've got on my sleeve is tattoos. I can hold the coin here, hold these two here, just start shaking up and down, and as I do, the second coin appears at the tips of the finger. So we've got two over here. We got one here, and the last one happens when I blow, and that's the final coin jumped across. Which means that I've now made coins appear, I've made them jump, the last thing for me to do is to make them disappear. The first coin goes like this. Now that leaves us with two coins, maybe you didn't know what was going to happen, so I'm going to do it again. Watch the second coin as that one disappears right there. That leaves us with one. This last coin, hardest coin of the lot by far. If I put it up here, it jumps to this hand over here. If I put it up there, it jumps to this hand over here. If I touch it to here, it jumps down here. It's very difficult to make this last coin disappear. The only way to do it is to put it in my hand, wave my hand over, give a little blow, and just like that, the final coin will disappear. And that is the miracle of the three coins by the world's greatest coin magician, or definitely one of them, Jeff Latter. Guys, okay, so that's Jeff Latter's three coin routine and uh, my tweak on it, my, my take on it. Um, what makes this so good? Right, so what makes this so good is, first of all, a lot of the time when you're out gigging, you haven't got much time. You've got to go from table to table to table or group to group to group, right? And you haven't got time to do a 10 or a 15 minute set you might only have time to do like two or three minutes and if that's the case can you think of many routines that have got as much moments of magic as this first of all it establishes credibility immediately because within the first few seconds you've made one two 
two coins appear and then the third coin appears but the second one vanishes then it happens again then it happens again then you've got three coins so within the first 30 seconds you've done like five or six moments of magic and nobody at that point will think oh I've seen my Uncle Bob do stuff like that. Immediately at that point, you've got credibility. But then you go into this coins across sequence, which I absolutely love. Because what's really nice is the hand remains closed the entire time. So the hand remains closed around those three coins the entire time. And then you make the first coin appear. You make the second coin appear at the tips of the fingers. And you make the third coin appear. It's like a three fly in that the three coins are appearing at your fingertips one by one. But unlike a three fly, this hand is closed. So there's no transfer sequences. There's no, let me put this over here. Let me put it back. There's nothing like that. The three coins go in the hand. The hand remains empty. And the three coins appear over here one at a time. Because this is the way that the routine is done up here at chest height, it makes it perfect for banquet style. And silver dollars work really well with this routine. But also you take a step back and you can do it mix and mingle absolutely fine. And then you've got the final sequence, which is the complete vanish. And you do after, it's really nice because the first vanish, your hands are shown empty. The second vanish, your hands are shown empty. And then the third vanish, apparently your hands are shown empty. If you wear a watch, which I don't do a lot, you can do a Josh Che style complete vanish. There's lots of different ways to actually affect the final coin into a complete vanish. But it's, it's just such a really killer routine. And again, excuse me, again, the angles are really good with this. I mean, normally these type of routines, the angles aren't really great. Uh, but in this one, the angles are just super awesome. Everything is so cool about this routine. But the, the, the coins across sequence is my favourite. I love it when a hand remains closed. When you're doing coins across and your hand remains closed the entire time, that's really important, I think, because that way people know you're not going to sneak them out. And a lot of the time when I'm performing this, I'll say, guys, watch this hand. Make sure my hand remains closed. I'm going to make the coins jump, but I'm not going to open this hand at any point. Look, boom, there's the first one. Did you see me open the hand? No, well, I'm going to do it again. Make sure I don't open up the hand. Boom, there's the second one. And then that third one, and you learn a move in this routine, which is a one-handed unnest of a shell whilst it's part of a fan of coins, which is so useful. I've actually adapted that into so many other routines. Uh, I remember the first time I saw Jeff Latter do this, his hands were really shaking. Um, I think he was a little bit nervous, which is weird to think of Jeff Latter as nervous because he's so good. But his hands were shaking to the point that he actually pointed it out to the audience in the routine. And he went, is there an earthquake or is it just me? And his hands were shaking. But even with his hands shaking, you could just see how incredible this routine was. You could see just how much potential this routine has. And it does. I do this routine in the real world more than almost any other routine that I do. Uh, and I'll do this and then I'll go into something else. And it's really nice to have a routine that, that, that's a coin routine that doesn't end with a jumbo coin production. Because a lot of coin routines end with a jumbo coin production. It becomes almost a little bit cliched, right? Well, the, with this routine, that's not the case. You, you've, got, you've got the appearance, you've got the coins across and you've got the complete vanish. And then you can immediately go into something else. Right, let's go into something else, shall we? So there you go. I absolutely love this. I'm going to uh, highly recommend it. You can learn it from the, as I say, the New York Coin Guys, Volume 1. It's on various other projects as well, I believe. I'm pretty sure it's in his book. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's the Jeff Latter Three Coin Trick. Okay, so we have one final routine to look at now, and this one is mine. It's based on uh, stuff by Michael Rubenstein. It's based on stuff by uh, David Roth. Uh, but in essence, this is designed for tabled work. So this is not a mix and mingle piece because you're going to need a cup for sure. So you're going to need a cup. But this is a really nice routine um, that has a really nice kind of flow to it, has a really nice story to it, and it combines uh, a coin production with um, sort of a wild coin style routine uh, into one cool routine, but you end up with four regular half dollars that you can then go into any other routine that you want to. Uh, let me show you the routine first of all. This is from um, the set of Netrix because we've been filming it recently for Netrix. Let me, uh, let me show this to you. So I've got Luke behind the camera and Luke asked me a question earlier. How do you make money with magic? Well, there's actually three ways that magicians can make money. I'm gonna show you what those three ways are. Uh, and it's going to need to be using a cup and one of those. Now, this, Luke, is an invisible purse. Okay. Now, the whole thing's not invisible. If it was, you'd never see it. But the bag is invisible, which means that anything inside the purse is invisible. This is the first way, as a magician, you can make money. Because, obviously, you can reach into your invisible purse. And if you've got money in there, you can take it out. Now, the thing is, this isn't really making money, though. Because the thing is, you have to have the money to put in there in the first place. 
So really, this isn't that good. So the second way to make money is by using magic coins. You see, this right here, this silver American dollar is a magic coin. It can make copper coins appear by magic. I'll show you how it works. I'll put the silver coin in my hand, the copper coin I'll put into the uh, into the cup. Now, all I have to do is squeeze that silver coin. And when I do, I can make another copper coin appear, which is kind of weird. Now, you might have missed that. I'll do it again. I'll put that copper coin we've just made appear in the cup. I'll okay. put the silver coin in the hand. If I just squeeze, I can make another copper Doesn't coin. It's kind of weird, right? <laughs> but it's not a great way of making money because I'm only making a copper coin appear every time. And these things are basically worthless. They're all English pennies, mm. which means that I can make money from it because I'm obviously putting copper coins in there. I'm taking the silver coin squeezing I'm making copper coins I can do it over and over again but the problem is I can sit here for five hours doing that and I just have a cup full of uh, copper coins so there is one other other way that magicians can make money and that doesn't involve a copper coin it does but it's kind of a little bit different what we're not going to use that copper coin we're just going to use the copper coins in there okay? okay the other way that you can make money is by using a really special silver coin so what you do this is an alchemist's coin and I know that sounds ridiculous, but you know alchemy? You can take any type of metal and turn it into gold. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the same sort of thing, but with silver. This is a pure silver half dollar. And inside this cup, we've got a whole bunch of copper coins. So if I put that silver coin in there, wait a second. This is the best way for a magician to make money because now those copper coins turn into silver coins and absolutely everything <laughs> is examinable. Okay, so that's the routine. Uh, like for a parlor show or a restaurant or somewhere where you've got a table and you've got control over the audience, it's great. It's not going to be something that you do at a banquet table. It's not going to be something that you do mix and mingle. But if you do it like bar work, it's absolutely great. Um, mix and mingle where you've got tables, it's absolutely great. Um, uh, as I say, parlor shows, or, or, so many different places this works really well. Um, and when you're in that environment, this is absolute killer. I love the use of a cup when you do coin magic because you get that lovely clink when you drop the coins in there, which is really great. Now, I'll tell you the main negative behind this routine. The main negative behind this routine is it is not an easy routine to do. It is actually very difficult because you are palming, I think, four coins uh, in classic palm and you have to have the ability to drop them off one at a time. So it's not the easiest routine in the world to do. You do need to have a good classic palm uh, with a good control over dropping coins. But if you've got that, then this routine is an absolute killer because they're seeing these coins appear from nowhere. And every single time they, uh, they appear from nowhere and you're dropping them in the cup and then you're making more appear. And it's the presentation that absolutely makes sense. It's a nice little story um, that, that, that makes sense. And two minutes into it, you then tip them out. You've got regular coins. And, and now you can go into a normal wild coin. So if you know, um, you know David Roth's wild coin or Michael Rubenstein's wild coin or anything like that, you can go into that at that point. So this makes a great transitional routine um, because you've got the cup in play and have established the cups in play. You can go into multiple different sequences and multiple different routines so it's a really great routine um i absolutely love performing it it's one of those right time right place places it's not going to be one that you're going to be doing all of the time but again from an opening point of view it's a great opener because you bring the two coins out you have them examined you go into this whole thing and you end up with a whole bunch of coins so you're making coins magically but it's very very different to a normal coin production you're not making them appear flashily or anything like that like the first two routines but you are still ending up with a coin production so there you go I really, really like it. That is your third opening coin production that you've probably never seen before. So there you go, guys. That is another magic stuff in the bag. It's another one of the three best trick series. Let me know what you think. I really like this one. Uh, are there, and you know what? I say this every single time I do one of these, but please let me know. Are there any, of the, uh, are there any other things that you want me to address when it comes to the three best trick series? because I will happily do that for you. If there's a particular thing you want me to address, please let me know and I'll do a video on it. Also, don't forget, please leave a comment down below. I read all your, your comments and I love reading them. If you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Like I say, leave a comment down below and I'm going to be back again tomorrow on Friday with a rant at nine o'clock, six o'clock alive and two o'clock in shorts. I'll see you again. My name's Craig from Magic. <laughs>